Hello, and welcome to the Lightboard Studio here at Oregon State University. I'm Casey Walsh, the director of Project Boxan, and I'm going to talk to you about a recent paper that I created with Michael Dumel and Katie Williams about tracking students' engagement with open educational resources and online homework. I especially want to thank OSU's eCampus Research Fellowship and some other Oregon State uh, funding entities, including students James May and Jake Bigelow. All of this is work for the Physics Education Research Conference of 2019. Okay, so what is Project Boxan? Well, it's a website. We'll start with that. It's full of open educational resources, including 300 pre-lecture videos that were made here at Oregon State University for our physics students. It's got open source textbooks, including the OpenStax textbook. It's got YouTube videos, including Khan Academy, and all the best resources that we could find online and here in-house. It's got concept maps and tips and tricks, and we've got so much stuff, it's too many to list. And it's really the main course website that students use to navigate through the curriculum. We're really interested in educational data mining. So while our students go through the class, we follow their clickstream and we analyze what sort of engagement behaviors correlate with interesting effects in their grades. Uh, things that we collect are like when they start a video, when they pause a video, what video quartile they're in. We also know when they click on anything on the site. So we get some pretty fine-grained tracking capabilities. We were really lucky for the last few years to get access to our students' engagement with online homework through Mastering Physics. We were able to get the complete clickstream data from them, so we're also including that in our analysis. All right, so what was the first thing that we wanted to do? Well, we just want to look, are there any sorts of engagement patterns that are interesting? So we just plotted what are the total number of sessions on the site versus time for uh, one of the terms. So this is fall of 2017. First thing you see is there's definitely some patterns showing up. Students tend to not want to do their work on the weekends, totally understandable. And wow, look what happens here. During week four, there's a lot of extra engagement. During midterm two, week seven, there's extra engagement. Thanksgiving, they check out, which is totally cool. And a lot of engagement, final exam, and then a little bloop, check your grade here at the end. So there's definite patterns about how students engage, and they tend to engage quite a bit more during exam weeks than during off-exam weeks. This is our first part of our exploratory analysis. So we want to go a little bit deeper. We want to see, okay, we've got all this data. What sort of things correlate with each other? What sort of engagement uh, in the site? What sort of homework grades? What all could we think about? There's too many to look at, so we put a few down here, some of the most important things that we thought would be interesting. And first thing you see, there is a spectrum of correlations. There are some things that correlate extremely well, like fundamental examples and practice problems. Well, that's actually a little misleading. You have to go to fundamentals to get to the practice problems. So uh, that's a, a path dependency there. But that and the one up here are the only two that are like that. The rest of them are true correlations. And it started to paint an interesting picture of things that group together. Now, for this work, we're really just interested in the final grade. What actually correlated with final grade? Well, we see three things that tend to do that well. One is attempting problems on homework getting problems correct, and then actually video quartiles watched of the pre-lecture videos. All of those were correlated with your final grade. Okay, so we wanted to go a little deeper. Let's look at one of these things. Let's look at watching the pre-lecture videos. Does that actually, how does that affect look as we evolve through time? So here we've got a kind of complicated plot. On the vertical axis, we've got our uh, number of videos that the students engaged with. On the horizontal, we have a running grade based on a weighted average of their exams. And then we scatter plotted their behavior. We've got a nice linear fit and a slope and a p-value for that line. And then these little circles here, these big circles here, these are actually grouping students based on what grade range they had uh, for their final overall grade. And what we can do is we can look at this on a week by week by week basis and see what happens. How does it evolve? Does it change? Does it matter which week? Obviously, we had evidence that the overall engagement changed by week. What I want you to pay attention while I watch this video is the movement of the slope. The slope's going to be going up and down. In fact, these big circles are going to be moving around as well. And so that's definitely telling us that there's quite a bit of difference based on which week is going on. So let's watch this video. You see that we start out with a little positive slope, and then it goes negative, then it goes really negative. It kind of comes back up positive, positive, oh, negative again, positive, positive. 
and then when we get to our last week, week 11, boy, it's definitely a negative slope. So there's a wide range of correlations, positive and negative, worth watching pre-lecture videos and final grade. So let's summarize that with this little diagram right here. So here, we've just plotted what were those slopes versus the weeks, and that's a pretty nice visualization that during these midterm and final exam weeks, there tends to be negative correlation with engagement with videos. But during off-exam weeks, it tends to be more positive with a little bit of lead-in that happens here during the first two weeks where it's not necessarily negative or positive too much. Now, that's not that... Uh, confusing to us because we suspect that students shouldn't be watching videos leading up to an exam. That's the familiarization stage of the learning. That should be done early in the learning cycle. By the time you get to exams, you shouldn't be actually familiarizing yourself and watching people do physics. You should be actually doing physics yourself. So these types of flips actually don't happen if you look at the same type of plot with the homework that they're attending, that they're doing. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is can we look at mastering physics? What does the engagement distribution look like with that online homework? On the vertical axis, we have the percentage of students in each range. And on the horizontal axis, we have the percentage of mastering physics uh, that the students actually engaged with. And as you go back deeper, you have the different grade groups. People who got between 40 and 50, 50 and 60 in the different final course grades. So if you're to the left and front, you got low course grade and low mastering physics engagement. And if you're to the right and back, you got a high course grade and high mastering physics engagement. Well, certainly you see the distribution as you might suspect. The students that are actually getting better grades are engaging more and more with their online homework. So that gave us some good evidence that there certainly is a nice distribution that we can look at. We added the box and videos and kind of did that together in aggregate with the engagement with the online homework and it looks kind of similar. Both these plots tend to stop at about 66%. Most of that is because we put a lot of problems on mastering physics and we said that you get full credit if you only go and do two thirds of them, which is about all the students would do even the best ones. So that was interesting too. All of that part of our exploratory analysis. So the next thing we asked is, what happens if students change their behavior? Are you destined to the grade that you get on an exam? So right here we plotted on the horizontal axis the change in video engagement from one exam period to the next versus the change in exam. And notice we have a nice positive slope, and that meant that students that changed their behavior, started watching more videos, tended to do better on exams. Not a huge effect, it could have a five, maybe up to a, a six, seven percent effect on your final grade if you really change your behavior quite a bit. And we said, okay, well that's midterm one to midterm two. If we look at the next uh, time period, from midterm two to the final, we still have a positive slope. It's a little less positive. Uh, in fact, if we keep doing this throughout the year, it always stays positive. It always is a positive effect of changing behavior, but the slope gets less and less and less and less, uh, meaning that it's not as large of an effect. We suspect that's actually because students are not changing their behavior as much as we go deeper and deeper into the year. Okay, so we used all of that information to help inform a hypothesis model-based analysis. And our hypothesis was that videos, homework attempts, and getting the homework correct actually could be used to predict final grades. So we created this model, a linear mixed model, uh, and the important terms here, I think, are beta 1, 2, and 3. Beta 1 is how much you can expect to have your grade increase by increasing 10% interaction with pre-lecture videos. Beta 2 is the same thing for attempting homework, and uh, beta 3 is for increasing whether you got the homework correct or not. Now, beta 4 and 5 are the expected grade shift intercepts that we would expect from winter and spring, respectively. And tau and epsilon are trying to quantify the amount of error that we have between students and between terms for a given student. So we ran this through a uh, linear mixed model analysis and uh, we're able to create this table of values. And first thing we noticed is that we actually had some pretty good statistics. Our p-values are significant, meaning that we do have a valid hypothesis and this can be used to quantify the effect. First thing you do notice then when you go deeper is videos didn't have a huge effect. About 2.5% maximum effect on expected grade. Um, but that's not that unusual because, again, we said videos is really early in the learning cycle. It's part of uh, being familiar with the material. But if you ask any physicist, they're going to tell you you need to do physics to actually get better at physics. So what about homework attempts? 
sure enough, 13 and a half percent maximum effect on just attempting to do the homework on your final grade. We thought that was pretty significant, especially considering that it only counts for 5 percent of your overall grade. So that means you're getting almost a threefold return on investment by just attempting to do homework and not even whether you got it right or not. Now, here's an interesting one. Looking at whether you got it correct or not is a significant effect, but it's 2% less than whether you actually attempted it or not. Now, we think that's a little misleading. We think that's probably due to the prevalence of online cheating, and then I think if we remove that, we would see it be a stronger effect than whether you attempted it or not. Because we do think that whether you get it correct or not probably is more important or a better predictor than whether you attempted it. But either way, I think this is a really important lesson, that just attempting homework really does have a significant effect on your final grade. All right, so let's look at a quick summary here. First of all, we did this exploratory analysis. We saw the spectrum of correlations where some things correlated a little bit with others, some things not at all. Um, we had this hypothesis that videos and homework correlated with your final grade, and that looked to be true in the exploratory analysis. And we looked at correlations with how behavior during exam week changes, and there was definitely significant behavior changes and cramming effects that were negative towards your final grade, meaning that if you watched more videos and you were doing all of that right before the exam, that's not a good exercise to do right before exam. You need to have done that early and you need to be practicing problems. And students are not destined to the final grade that they get. If they increase their engagement, they can increase their exam scores. So then we moved into our model-based analysis. We confirmed our hypothesis that video and homework were important indicators and were correlated with your final grade and could be used as a predictor. Videos have a small effect on grade, uh, and, uh, but attempting homework had a pretty large effect, almost a threefold return on investment, and that correctly answering it was smaller than actually just attempting it, but again, we think that's probably due to the prevalence of online copying. All right, uh, future work, we definitely want to do a demographic breakdown, including we're building an entire distance learning eCampus course that goes live in fall 2019, and we want to see how that cohort of student engages differently than our on-campus students. We want to move into predictive modeling, and so we've started an artificial intelligence uh, analysis where we can try and group students based on the different types of engagements, and hopefully use that to do early warning sign predictions so that we can create interventions and find students before it's too late and reach out to them. Because ultimately what this work is about is improving student success here at Oregon State and in the wider community. So thanks for watching. I'm Casey. Bye.